Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here, these two trays, they're the two bins that I want to feed today together. I haven't really paired these systems up in the past yet, but today I figured I would. They're kind of the same age, not same age, but close enough. Same types of worms, same basic size. So I thought I'd uh, start treating these as sort of sister bins that we can manage together. And then sort of having paired up bins, uh, kind of like what I've already got going on over here in the case of my Euros when I split the population when I harvested their previous home. I had enough to break the population up and create two bins here. I've got two bins of red wigglers and I figured we'd start treating them as sort of sisters or cousins or twin bins maybe. So we're going to get these up onto the bench and feed them. So let's get to work. All right, we're starting in here with the older of the two systems. This one is 40, no, 67 days old. The other one's 49 days old. So three days shy of 10 weeks old here and exactly seven weeks old in the other one. And I think I'm seeing fewer spiders in my systems ever since the flying insect situation sort of subsided. But here I think we've still got a resident spider protecting the bin from invading insects which I'm all for. I have no objection to that. I just worry about not paying close enough attention and possibly squishing one of these little guys. But these guys are pretty capable in terms of getting around and whatnot. So as long as I can kind of get them out of the bin, I always feel like they'll, they'll have no problem finding their way back um, to where they were or where they want to be. But being in here is not where they want to be right now because <laughs> we're going to disrupt things. So here, like I said, 67 day old bin, which has been fed six times now, and eight days have passed since that last feeding. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't much of a feeding. All we really did was we threw in a pair, and it was anticipation of pairing the system up with the other system that we knew we'd be back in here pretty soon. So after only eight days, I don't know what to expect in terms of decay and breakdown of the pair, but that's really all they got and it was intentionally created as a somewhat scaled back, smaller size feeding with the knowledge that we'd be back in here soon. Today being that future moment in time to feed again and to further build out their food supply. So this here is the pear and I don't know about that scrape right there. I would have to assume that I caused that. If you look at it in certain ways, it hardly looks like it's made any progress, but in terms of the way it feels, it's really mushy, super soft. But I like the idea of keeping it, you know, as much as possible, at least, you know, within reason, intact, so we can observe the worm activity, breaking the stuff down rather than me crushing it up. It's not about getting it all broken down as quickly as possible for me, usually. For me, it's usually more interesting to observe how things actually um, play out on their own over time. So let's see, I've pretty much excavated all of these avocados in their pits. And we were um, probably going back to, I think, the maybe even the system's very first feeding or one of the very first feedings when those things were placed in here. So those are getting pretty old. And yeah, let's see. Yeah, not much has changed in here in the past eight days since we came in here to give them that food. And I think since we only fed that parent to here eight days ago, I think maybe we'll go a little bit skimpier on what we're giving them here in this bin versus what we're going to give to the other bin. Because the other bin has been over two weeks since they were last fed. And what they got fed last time was, I think if I remember correctly, I did sc screen through the video re really quickly. The other bin only got... I believe coffee mixed with worm chow here. We're going to be giving them some celery, the stems of some grapes, as well as some coffee. But like I usually do, we're going to lay in a little bit of fresh bedding to go hand in hand with our feeding here today. Help build the system out, help give them some balance to their diet. Because the kitchen scrap type stuff, coffee, all that brings a lot of nitrogen into the mix. But you need a good amount of carbon to help keep that within balance. So let's get some bedding in here. Probably have to replenish my supply of bedding one of these days soon. So we don't have to go crazy. We're also going to be giving them 
this piece of paper that was marking for us the feeding zone that'll be a nice piece of supplementary bedding to give them since what they're getting is also going to include a nice new coffee filter which will remain in here in the capacity of feeding zone indicator function to replace the paper towel so we'll save the rest of that coffee and blend it in with the rest of the stuff that they're getting because on top of this fresh bedding and coffee it's usually here I like to sprinkle in a little bit of my worm chow to really sort of break up the monotony of what's in there and that makes for me at least something that looks like a nice mix that the worms should really enjoy sinking their teeth into although I don't think they really have teeth <laughs> and here too I want to give them some of this yummy rotten celery compliments of my mom last time she cleared out her crisper I guess she bumped into something that she perhaps forgot was there and you can see nature taking its course here too another piece of supplementary bedding we can include in the other bin when we feed the rest of the celery to them but besides the celery we're going to drop in some of this grape stem too let's give them the two small ones and we'll save the other one the large one for the other system and since these systems still have quite a way to go as far as i could tell in terms of age I figured why not let's just go ahead and give them some things that we know probably going to take a little while like those stems I mean they're kind of like sticks practically they're pretty tough material and they're not going to break down right away but I kind of like the idea of the fact that they're going to create little pockets of space within the bin to give the whole system a little bit of additional maybe airflow or something a little bit of a little bit of different structure than what's usually going on in here so we're almost done here, but I almost forgot to drop in what remains of this coffee. Let's make sure we deplete all the food we've got allocated to them before we cover up. And then this will become our feeding zone indicator. Let's see how well we can get this feeding zone covered back up. That should work. Here and there I bump into little bundles of paper and stuff, like little chunks of old bedding and stuff kind of in the habit of trying to break all that stuff up but in a, a system like this it's not too unusual there's lots of large bedding bits that are all kind of clumping together at this stage it doesn't really um, matter a whole lot uh, I just I don't know I just like the idea of continuing to keep that stuff sort of free of itself not letting it get bound up into little boulders and things that have sort of a less likely chance of breaking down rapidly because they're all bundled together if I can just break the stuff up commingle it with the nearby materials it all seems like it's got a better chance at breaking down moisture in here is not too too damp but I think plenty comfortable to suit the needs of the worms so I think we're done with this bin getting them there now what is this this is the older of the two bins this is the 67 day old system last fed eight days ago now receiving its seventh feeding so let's get the uh, the younger of the two systems, the seven week old system, out here. Wow, you know, I gotta say, there is a significant difference in weight. I must have really built this system out with a lot of material in the beginning because it's got a significantly greater amount of weight when I lifted it. Maybe it's just a lot of moisture, I'm not sure. No, I think it's just more stuff because it's higher, higher up too. Huh. All right, so I kind of sensed that this piece of paper here was going to be sort of a sacrificial piece of material, almost decorative top covering to start out with, but, you know, you can see that the worms have completely trashed it. I think this will also make for good supplemental bedding to include down in the feeding area. And look at all these nice castings all over the place. Yeah, these guys... According to the video that I watched 15 days ago, they were last fed coffee and worm chow, kind of a, a material that you don't expect to see a whole lot of leftovers of. So we'll look through the feeding area and see what we see. And I guess even if there were leftover bits of coffee, we would never be able to tell it apart at this point, I think. The worm chow might reveal itself as what it is, but I don't see anything that suggests that that's what that would be after two weeks that's not too surprising here I'm wondering if I don't know the moisture does seem a bit lacking I have to admit but I have in the past 
allowed my systems to get way too damp and then things start to clump up and get muddy and I'm really reluctant to let that happen and I know I've run systems much more dry than this in the past so I'm not too worried about it kind of putting it on watch though you know I like the idea of sort of acknowledging something that might be deviating a little bit away from the standard but not wanting to get in the habit of reacting to it as if it was the sky falling you know it's maybe something that would require some attention if it continues down its current path oh that was interesting <laughs> but for now we're just gonna put it on watch so this avocado, I guess, was pretty much intact with its seed inside the shell, inside everything. <laughs> it just kind of cracked it up into little bits and pieces. But the way that thing looks, I would have to imagine that's been in here for a while. Definitely predates the uh, predates the last feeding. All right, so lots and lots of bedding in this system. I could see it all over the place. So this system seems like it's got a really good consistency at least from my point of view hopefully not too dry because we're not going to go too crazy here I mean I guess I have the option to perhaps sprinkle in a little bit of water I've got you know it's not really fancy schmancy atomized sprayed in spritzed in addition of moisture but whatever it'll it'll blend in around and into the um, surrounding materials and hopefully hydrate everything with that bubble wrap covering things not too worried about it we've got our little terrarium effect going on some moisture will generally equalize underneath the plastic hopefully I've left enough room here to include our feeding so similar to how we arranged things in the other system we're gonna well, you know, here I thought with that big piece of newspaper, maybe we don't need so much of our shredded paper pre-made bedding that I've got. Because so I am running a little bit low, and this system does have good amounts of, you know, just bedding all over the place mixed in with the material throughout it. So here I thought we can maybe rely more on that recycled piece of top covering newspaper to be the carbon supplement to their feeding today. Here, too, we're giving them maybe a little bit more celery than the other system got probably not a whole lot more though yeah this looks like a pretty nice feeding I guess on this go around I forgot to bring out my grit a lot of times I'll include grit with my worm bin feedings the grit that I use is pulverized eggshell but since my systems generally do get that as part of their feedings almost every time if you skip one or miss one or forget one once in a while certainly doesn't matter so I think we're good here we're gonna cover up use this nice new coffee filter to indicate to ourselves where we last fed and in my systems it's kind of a tradition to do that and in certain cases it is very practical if you're gonna be switching around the feeding zone going from place to place it's always a good idea to remind yourself where you last fed or at least I think it's a good idea it's certainly not necessary and then uh and then you'll always find your way back and know where you last fed. A lot of times it's really obvious. There's usually a big divot there where they've cavitated the space where the food was placed. <laughs> or signs like that, castings on the top surface. But in my systems, it's kind of tradition to do it that way. So no top covering. We'll just go with the feeding zone indicator. I got a funny feeling it's going to get chewed up pretty bad. <laughs> but we'll see next time we come in here to feed both of these systems together as sisters, twins, cousins, whatever we're going to end up calling them. I know I've used the concept of sister bins in the past, so something will settle in in terms of what to call these. <laughs> but that's it for the video today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.